you for watching. I'm Lester Holt. Please take care of yourself and each other. Good night. DA's office should be ashamed of the way they handle this case. You are incompetent, unprofessional. If I'd been paying closer attention, none of this would have happened. Were you here to fire me? The lessons I learned growing up in Brownsville still ring true today. Work hard, take responsibility, and do your best. But that's not happening with Tony Evers. Evers released Wisconsin's worst criminals. Killed jobs, paid people not to work, and he lets so much more go up in flames. I'm Tim Michaels. It's time to stop the madness. As governor, I'll take the values I learned here and put them to work for Wisconsin. Tim Michaels for governor. Get the nutritional support your family needs. Call the Family Food Helpline. Straight ahead, a local soccer team is headed to state. We'll show you the school's kickoff from this morning. Plus, a top Milwaukee elections official has been fired. We'll have more on her incorrectly sent ballots. And Senator Ron Johnson made a campaign stop in Rhinelander. We'll have the details as your local news starts right now. News Watch 12 with Dan Hagen, Jessica Jukic, and Jeff Weller. Good evening and welcome to News Watch 12 at 6. I'm Jessica Jukic. And I'm Dan Hagen. Playoffs are well underway for boys soccer. After falling short to Medford twice this season, Rhinelander soccer finally won when it counted most. Then they beat Rice Lake in the sectional final. Now the team's heading to state. Newswatch 12's Matt Weaver was at the school-wide pep rally early this morning and joins us now live in studio with more. Matt? Well, Jessica, after a spirited send-off, head coach Nathan Bates and crew arguably head into their biggest matchup yet. Making state is very impressive, but the ride's not over yet. This has been our goal since day one of the season was to make it to state, and they exceeded that goal. Everyone on the team is really excited. It's a feeling we've never had before. For the first time in school history, Brightlander Boys Soccer has reached the state tournament. The ride's been awesome. I mean, I got a great group of boys that I've had the opportunity to coach for a very long time, and. Uh, you know, their willingness and their drive and determination to win all the games is what kept us in it. In his fourth season as head coach, Nathan Bates has seen his freshman class become senior contenders. When they got down, they didn't quit. They continued to grind it out and they came back and win, you know. So that's the one thing that's always hard to teach and instill in the high school kids is if we get down and trying to get back up again. And this year they did that. The Hodags will face top-seeded Notre Dame Tritons in the semifinals, but the underdog mentality keeps them hungry. We're going to come out there hardworking. We have a lot of grit on our team, and I think it's going to be more of a mindset thing for the game. While Rhinelander hasn't been in this position before, we know that they're going to be a good team. They're going to be very skilled. They're still up for the battle. The truth is they're really not that much different from us. We still love the game. We still practice five days a week, and so for them to come out thinking they're going to take us, like kill us, is going to be pretty wrong. Bates told me he was happy with all that the team has done this year, but tomorrow afternoon will be the ultimate test for their breakthrough season. Well, thanks, Matt. You know, I played high school soccer, yep. and around this time of year, it was really cold out, but not the case this year. Not this year. Record high temperatures yesterday and today, but now we're done with those. Cooler temperatures are on the way with some rain. Let's go outside now to Park Falls, a beautiful scene there. The sun is now set with temperatures hanging out in the 50s and 60s. They had a couple highs near 70 today, but tomorrow, uh-uh, not so much. We'll have dropping temperatures pretty much all day long tomorrow with some rain showers across the area. Right now, though, we're at 65 in Rhinelander, 69 for Wausau. This is not normal. The average high is 45. All of us were above that today and we'll be again tomorrow but dropping temperatures and windy pretty much all day. And here is the front. It's right there. That is moving this way. Once it gets here though, it's going to stall right over central Wisconsin as energy rides along it. That will give us a good chance for rain showers late tonight, a break for several hours tomorrow and then locally heavy rainfall in the forecast for us tomorrow night into Saturday morning. Out there now, this increase in clouds or something to the west of us across Minnesota. That is some light rain showers there. Uh, these will fill in tonight. Look for showers after midnight. Our forecast then tonight though is clouding over with some showers late. Low temperatures down near 54. Your full forecast is coming up. Jessica.
Thank you, Jeff. A top Milwaukee elections official has been fired after sending falsely obtained military absentee ballots to the home of a Republican state lawmaker. The deputy director of the Milwaukee Election Commission, Kimberly Zapata, requested military ballots for fictitious voters from clerks in nearby municipalities using the state's My Vote Wisconsin website. The ballots were sent to the home of Republican State Representative Janelle Branchin, who chairs the Assembly Elections Com Committee. She's voiced support for overturning the results of the 2020 presidential election. Zapata was fired immediately after the city was made aware that she might have been responsible. She had worked for the Elections Commission for seven years and with the city of Milwaukee for nearly 10 years. An FCC commissioner says the U.S. government should ban TikTok. FCC commissioner Brendan Carr says TikTok should not be allowed in the U.S. because of the concerns about the company's handling of user data. There are fears the Chinese government could try to access the information TikTok has on U.S. citizens who use the popular social media app. The Committee on Foreign Investment in the U.S. has spent months, months negotiating a national security agreement to allow TikTok to continue operating in the U.S. But Commissioner Carr says she's worried, he's worried the company will find a way around the deal. TikTok hasn't commented on Carr's statements. The Canadian citizen who allegedly attacked Paul Pelosi, the husband of House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, was in the U.S. illegally. That's according to U.S. immigration officials. David DePap is facing numerous state and federal charges, including attempted murder and assault with a deadly weapon. Federal records say DePap came into the U.S. legally through Mexico in March. Canadians who come to the U.S. for travel purposes are usually able to stay for six months. But the Department of Human Services didn't say when DePap's deadline expired. Paul Pelosi was released from the hospital today. The USDA is expanding a program to help dozen of counties in Wisconsin. The Rural Partners Network expanded to 12 counties including Iron and Price County. The program will also help the Greater Menominee Community Network which includes Menominee Indian Tribe of Wisconsin and Menominee County. The government program partners with rural people to access resources and funding to create local jobs, build infrastructure, and support long-term economic stability. The program has helped Chippewa County with a $1.5 million grant to expand a meat and poultry processing program. With five days left, the midterm election's almost here, and Wisconsin po politicians are out on the campaign trail. That includes here in the northern part of the state. Governor Tony Evers stopped by Rhinelander, Merrill, and Ashland today. Here's his stop at the Vilas County Democratic Party headquarters in Arbor Vita. Evers touted his record boosting broadband, fixing potholes, and supporting first responders. The governor delivered tax cuts in his latest budget, but some Republican legislators have been critical of Evers for taking credit for tax cuts they wrote. I asked the governor if he should still take credit. I proposed it, I signed it, it's my budget, and so I, you know, they, I'll be glad to share it with them. They, I just want to make sure they continue doing it. Evers went on to criticize Tim Michaels for his idea of a flat tax, which economists say would raise taxes on the middle class and cut taxes for top earners. I also asked Evers about his opponent's calls for more taxpayer-funded private school vouchers. Our public schools, you know, especially in the North Northwoods, they they deserve to have the resources they need, so they don't have to go on a referendum every couple of years and have winners and losers. Evers is proposing to spend $2 billion more on public schools in the next budget. Michaels has signaled he would not support substantial funding increases for public schools. Senator Ron Johnson is hoping to win a third term next Tuesday. The Republican made stops across the Northwoods to meet with supporters. Here's Johnson's stop at the United County Republican headquarters in Rhinelander. He encouraged attendees to double their efforts this last stretch of the campaign by making sure friends and family will be headed to the polls. I asked Senator Johnson about inflation and how it's higher in Europe than the U.S. right now. He said it all comes back to the Democrats spending too much. America sneezes, the rest of the world catches a cold. cold. So we spent trillions of dollars of money we didn't have. That's what sparked it. Plus, uh, President Biden's war on fossil fuel. Democrats would argue disrupting the world's biggest grain export, Ukraine, and the biggest energy exporter, Russia, has more to do with inflation than spending. 
I also asked Senator Johnson about the 2017 tax cut he championed and how his wealthy donors benefited from it. My tax cut uh, was used by more than 20 million business tax filers, mainly small business to allow them to compete against the big guys. It is accurate that most small businesses benefited from the tax cut, but it also delivered the majority of its tax savings to the wealthiest 1% of Americans, including $36 million in one year to Republican mega-donor Diane Hendricks. A woman in Price County is making sure people who served our country are not forgotten. Coming up after the break, we'll explain how she's honoring veterans and her next project. That's After Weather with Jeff right here on Newswatch 12. News Watch 12 is brought to you by Bone & Joint Walk-In Care. Child killers, murderers, rapists. Hundreds released early by Tony Evers' parole commission. And they're not even telling victims' families. Governor Evers, everyone in Wisconsin is less safe because of you. You have dreams. To visit your grandkids. To start a small business. To spend time on the lake. The cost of a good health care plan should support those dreams, whatever they may be. They're your dreams. We're just here to help you live them. Aspirus Health Plan, a great plan for your best life. Breaking news in Dallas, Texas, where at least five police officers were killed when they were ambushed. This was the deadliest day for U.S. law enforcement since 9-11. Just days after this horrific crime, Mandela Barnes appeared on Vladimir Putin's propaganda news outlet and rationalized violence against American police officers. Police officers are over-exercising their badges. This probably was a retaliatory attack. Do you want Mandela Barnes representing you in the Senate? I'm Ron Johnson, and I approve this message. Culligan Water delivers from your first call to your first sip to your first soak. Culligan, give us a tap. The only water that comes with a van. I'm Eileen Daniel, and for many, the Northwoods is a place for recreation. But for me and my family, it's been home for 18 years. It's where we, like you, spend every day working, playing, and supporting our community. I'm honored to have been elected to the Rhinelander City Council, where we've been making a lot of good things happen. I've served on the board of our local homeless shelter and continue to volunteer for them whenever I can. I look forward to my next opportunity to serve Oneida and Vilas counties as your next Wisconsin Assembly person. Together, we can build a stronger Wisconsin and a better Northwoods. Child killers, murderers, rapists. Hundreds released early by Tony Evers' parole commission. And they're not even telling victims' families. Governor Evers, everyone in Wisconsin is less safe because of you. It's finally happening. A healthy rain event is on the way for us beginning late tonight, off and on throughout the day tomorrow. The heaviest rain gets in here late tomorrow night into early parts of Saturday morning. Okay, we could use rain. Here's a drought monitor. It comes out every Thursday. And parts of north central Wisconsin are under level one, two, and three drought conditions right now. It's not the growing season. It's not going to hurt anybody, but we could definitely use some moisture. The lake levels and river levels are very, very low outside right now. Okay, so it's clouding over. Temperatures in the mid-60s. That's not normal with a south breeze at 15 right now. Dew point at 50. So it's getting more and more humid outside as the rain showers are not so far away right now. It's still 69 in Wausau, calm wind there at the airport, and that dew point there of 51. All right, so around the horn, look at So near record high temperatures again today. It's uh, 63 in Medford, 69 for Stevens Point, a couple of 70s out there earlier. But now they're going to fall back. And look off to the west of us right now. Much colder air is on the way there. <laughs> Can you find the cold front? Yeah, it's right there, right? So that is all moving in our direction. It's going to sit over us tomorrow and not completely pass through the area. And then along that front, energy will ride tomorrow night. That's going to get all of us wet tomorrow evening as a healthy rain event is on the way. Temperature-wise, though, so 55 tomorrow, but it's going to fall pretty much all day long into 
through the mid 40s by this time tomorrow evening. And then 48 for Saturday, 54 for Sunday. You get the idea. Uh, different air masses on the way. Some signs now pointing toward a warm up, though, next week, Wednesday and Thursday. Okay, so here's the jet stream. That river of air, about 30,000 feet up, kind of steers everything around the world. When you see it do this, this is a trough and then a ridge. It's a very energized, active pattern. We get storm systems out of that. We're going to get one in the area tomorrow into Saturday and Sunday, followed by another one getting here probably Wednesday into Thursday of next week. Looking outside now, the clouds are increasing across our region. And off to the west, there's some rain showers uh, across the Dakota, some snow there as well. This will mostly be a rain event for us, though. We have rain on the way. It could end as a little bit of snow on Saturday evening, most likely not. Uh, mostly rain showers are on the way with this event coming our way. And it could be a healthy rainfall, right? So a widespread soaking, one to two inch rainfall is on the way with many breaks in the rain tomorrow. The heaviest rain gets in here late tomorrow night into early parts of Saturday morning. So our forecast then tonight, though, is scattered showers and a couple of thunder showers out there, non-severe, with low temperatures or not so low, low temperatures down near 54. For tomorrow, okay, so scattered showers, lots of large breaks in the rain tomorrow, but it is Friday uh, with a high temperature near 55, but dropping pretty much all day long. And then looking ahead, your seven-day forecast by Northwoods Furniture and Mattress shows, yeah, we get wet tomorrow, wet Saturday, our time change on Sunday. Monday, we get a break cooler. We vote on Tuesday before more rain showers in here Wednesday to Thursday of next week. Jessica and Dan. Thanks, Jeff. The jobs market appears to be holding its own right now. According to the latest numbers from the Labor Department, the jobs picture hasn't changed much in the last month. Weekly unemployment claims totaled 217,000 last week, down by 1,000 from the previous period and slightly below the 2020,000 ,000 estimate. However, continuing claims, which run a week behind, increased 47,000 to more than 1.4 million. On Friday, the Labor Department will release its non-farm payroll for October, which is expected to show a gain. Community leaders are always working to find ways of making the places they live better. Recently, one woman in Price County did just that by creating a veterans memorial. Pam Goble is a resident of the small community of Lugerville, and she says that making a community of people are proud starts with just one person. But we have nothing out here. It's a small town. There's nothing here. And we have a lot of veterans. And my dad and my brothers and uncles were all veterans. And I wanted to do something for them. Pam has been a resident for 34 years and a tavern owner for the past eight years. The Veterans Memorial is just a way to make the community proud. With some help of my husband and my sons and neighbors, uh, basically I put the brick and placed it and leveled it and went from there. Coming up on November 19th, there will be a pie auction at the Crane Chase Tavern. Proceeds from that will go towards saving the Lugerville School, which is currently in rough shape. The Milwaukee Bucks are on a hot streak. Newswatch 12 Saul Meyer will have the highlights from last night's game after the break. Brought to you by Lockview Desire Health Center, Eagle River, and Waters Meet. Winter is almost here, which means it's time to get your home ready for anything the season will throw at you. Menards has everything you need to stay productive during the winter. Whether you're trying to keep up with the snow, save on energy, or warm up by the fire, trust the team that's dedicated to service and quality to help you make the most of your winter. Whether that's inside or out, right now get 11% off everything you need this winter. Save big money at Menards. You've heard what women say about working at Tim Michaels' company, that they were groped. A male superior groped the crotch and inner thigh of a female employee. And pressured to have sex with their bosses. And now we know more. According to an attorney involved in the case, when the only woman on a Michaels Road crew was sexually harassed on the job, the company did not take it seriously. From the top down. From the top down. If that's how Tim Michaels runs his company, how do you think he'd run the state? See the exceptional selection of jewelry at Golden Carrot Jewelers. Artistic handmade jewelry by Michu and Bella Trois. Fashion forward designs by Mira T and Frederick Sage. The latest trends and the forever classics from Facet Barcelona, Catan and more. 
Your full-service jewelry store in downtown Manaqua. Golden Carrot Jewelers has a surprise for everyone. Americans struggling to pay their bills. Yet Mandela Barnes supports a tax increase on working families. How could he? Barnes also supported hiring an army of 87,000 new IRS agents unleashed on families just like yours. That's terrifying. Mandela Barnes, higher taxes and IRS audits for you. Unpaid taxes for him. Remember that on Election Day. Wisconsin Truth Bank is responsible for the content of this advertising. The governor's basic responsibility is to keep us safe, strong, and thriving. We all know that's not happening. Tim Michaels, a new direction for Wisconsin. This election is about what a governor's going to do. I'm going to put more money in the pockets of the hardworking families of Wisconsin. We're going to have safer communities, and we're going to have better schools. That's what I'm going to do as your governor. I'm Tim Michaels. If you're ready for a new direction, hop in. Tim Michaels for governor. This portion of News Watch 12 is brought to you by Furniture and Appliance Mart. The Green Bay Packers have been struggling lately. After a decent start to the season, they're now on a four-game losing streak. They took on the or they take on the Lions this week, which people would usually say is a guaranteed win, but this is not the Packers for this week. The Lions are one and six, but their record doesn't reflect how dangerous that team really is. They rank fourth in the NFL in offensive yards per game and ninth in points per game. So the struggling Packers defense needs to be ready. While the Lions defensive numbers might not be as impressive, Coach LaFleur says that his offense should still expect a challenge. I mean, we haven't been sworn offensively, so I don't care what's out there. It's it's going to be a challenge for us. And, you know, I, I think they've always done a nice job of game planning against us and, and playing off some of our tendencies. Coach LaFleur also gives his take on why he thinks the Packers have been struggling on both sides of the ball. It gets back down to playing complimentary football. And unfortunately, we haven't done a very good job of that this season. And however that works itself out, I think that we, we've got to find that that magic formula. The Packers head to the head to Detroit at noon for their game against the Lions, where they have won five out of their last six matchups. The Milwaukee Bucks are off to one of the hottest starts to the season in franchise history. Seven and zero, and the only undefeated team left in basketball. The Bucks are hot. They beat the Detroit Pistons last night 116-91 to in yet another impressive win for the Bucs. Giannis Antetokounmpo is solidifying himself as the early favorite for MVP after dropping 32 points and 12 boards with five steals last night. Giannis has now scored at least 30 points in every game this season, and head coach Mike Budenholzer is happy to have that production for his team. He's just playing with a good feel. I, I think he's... I like the unselfishness that he's playing with, the way he's getting to, to dribble handoff actions and playing with his teammates. And it feels like he's playing a lot of different places and playing with a, just a good rhythm and a, really an unselfish heart. We'll be right back after the break. Black November starts now at Furniture and Appliance Mart. For a limited time, take a bonus 20% off your purchase of $1,999 or more at checkout. Plus, get 60 months special financing, no minimum and no money down at Furniture and Appliance Mart. Shifty Katrina Shankland. Up here, Shankland says what we want to hear. But down in Madison, voted against the largest tax cut in state history for seniors, families, and small businesses. Voted against funding for local roads and schools. Why? Because for $200,000 from party bosses in Madison, Shifty Shankland works for them, not us. Portage County Scott Soik, a business owner, Marine, and political outsider who puts us first, not Madison politicians. Scott Soik for Assembly. 
Creative Kitchen and Bath Studio has designed beautiful and functional kitchens and baths in the Northwoods. When helping plan your dream kitchen or bath with in-home consultation available, they provide 3D drawings of your spaces to bring your visions to life. Owner and designer Sarah has over 25 years of experience, overseen 500 plus projects, and built strong relationships with local contractors providing superior installation. Whether it's a new home or a remodel, Creative Kitchen and Bath Studio in Eagle River looks forward to making your dream kitchen or bath a reality. Americans struggling to pay their bills, yet Mandela Barnes supports a tax increase on working families. How could he? Barnes also supported hiring an army of 87,000 new IRS agents unleashed on families just like yours. That's terrifying. Mandela Barnes, higher taxes and IRS audits for you. Unpaid taxes for him. Remember that on Election Day. Wisconsin Truth Bank is responsible for the content of this advertising. As governor, I'll always try to do the right thing. I've worked with Republicans and Democrats to improve our public schools, cut income taxes for most families, fix our roads, and put our state on solid financial footing. But here's what I won't do. I won't cut funding from our kids' public schools. I won't cut funding from our police. And I'll never stop searching for good ideas from both parties to improve Wisconsin. I'm Tony Evers, and I'm asking for your vote. Black November starts now at Furniture and Appliance Mart. For a limited time, take a bonus 20% off your purchase of $1,999 or more at checkout. Plus, get 60 months special financing, no minimum and no money down at Furniture and Appliance Mart. At Eagle Floor Covering in Eagle River, we have a knowledgeable staff, competitive pricing, and free estimates. Browse our selection of carpet, vinyl, wood, and tile for your next home project. So, Jeff, we need to tell our Texan friend here that yep. this is not a normal November so far, right? So, this is not a normal November so far. <laughs> it's not? No. You, your shorts are going to be put away pretty soon. Do you have jeans and pants? Yeah, yeah. Okay, jacket. I've got sure. snow days. You know, and, and Jessica, <laughs> your uh, adopted hometown now up there this way, Merrill had a record high temperature of 70 today. Oh, so my gosh. Nice. last much longer either. Let's go outside now and check on the weather. Uh, temperatures are hanging out in the 60s and still a couple 70s out there. Again, not normal. Rain showers entering the picture tonight, often on light rain showers across the area tomorrow. Heavier rain showers tomorrow night, and it's going to get windy. Uh, not a great weekend coming our way with temperatures cooler and some rain showers Saturday into Sunday morning. Will Saul have to break out the snow shovel? And no snow shovel, but the snow umbrella. Shovel? Umbrella. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Jeff. That's all the time we have. We'll see you back here at 10. <laughs> Mr. Food Test Kitchen is brought to you by Golden Carrot Jewelers and Creative Kitchen and Bath Studio. 60 years ago, Americans spent